Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you. Let me close that. I'm going to show you um more on jumps, more advanced jumps, and I'm going to show you actually a basic calculator where the user can type something in. This is again going to just be a calculator that only can't calculate above nine or below zero, like you saw in the last tutorial. But this one's going to let the user type in. I'm actually going to use the that you know kind of flaw to my advantage. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to use jumps so I don't have to show you this in a whole separate tutorial and these jumps we're going to actually use these to check if it's greater than 9 or less than 0 before it displays it. Um, so let me have this loading. Let me load up CMD. CD desktop. Yes, everything's so slow. Why must everything be so slow? CD desktop. Now, as you can see, like I said, the reason we can't have it greater than 9. Because if it's greater than 9, let's say it's 10, it'll become a colon. Or if it's 11, it'll be a semicolon. But if it's 9, it's a 9. If it's 5, it's a 5. Um, but let's say it's negative 3, then it's going to be a minus sign. Or a negative 6, it's going to be um, an asterisk. So now, open up Notepad. Save your file as test.asm. Let's go ahead and write this at the bottom. 399, this file is going to be pretty big. Um, now, let's A100 and mob 09. Wait, mob A809 or 01. 01 will let you type in a key. Um, mob in 21. That's going to let you type in a key, which we went over a while ago. Zero ones, the function for retrieving a key press and showing the key they typed. Um, now, remember how I said when you type in a key, when you pause for key press, it will send the hex value, which is, you know, these values of the key you typed. Well, to, a, to the AL register, well, we're going to have to get two keys they type in since it's a like a little user calculator so to get two keys we want to when we get the second one it's going to send that value to the AL register and it's going to override the first key we typed in so what we're going to do we're going to move the a what's in, what's in the AL register to the CL register which CL is just another L register it's not the same as AL or DL or BL, but it doesn't really matter. It's what it's used for right now, because all we're using it for now is to store a value in. And we're moving what's in AL to CL. So when we pause for the second key press and it sends it to AL, it, we will still have the first key press in CL. And now let's get the second key press. And in 21. Now the first key press is in CL. The second one's in a um AL. So and it's the hex value. So if like they press two, it's 32 is going to be in there. If they press four, 34 is going to be in there. Uh, I hate that it's because I'm using virtual machine right now, not really on Windows XP. Go away. Um, I think we'll go away eventually. So what we're going to do? How you see? Um, why isn't it going away? Um, as you can see, thir four, 34 here um, is 4. 35 hex is equal to he 5. So all you have to do is subtract 30 from it. Um, so, sub CL 30, let's subtract 30 from that. Sub CL 8, um, or sub AL 30. So now both of them have 30 taken away. So now they're both just kind of like the raw number. Now, 
Let's add them together. Add CLAL. That doesn't add them together, it adds AL to CL, which is kind of the same thing. But net CL holds, holds the value of them added together, not AL. So now let's just ignore that thing. It just virtual box has been being stupid lately and acting up. So Maha AH09 zero 02. Zero 02 is to display. We use zero 02 as I saw seen in the last tutorial to display a um, character. So where the character we're going to display is DL. So how we added these let's say you typed in 3 it's going to get 33 subtract 30 and now it's going to be a 3 and that's what's going to be in CL and then when it asks for the second character let's say you type in 5 now it's going to get 35 subtract 30 and get 5 now it's going to add those and get 8 but the 8 character in hex is a backspace so how do I turn that back into an A over here well I just add 30 to it so what I'm going to do, I'm going to add 30 to CL. And now mob DL, which is what you use to display the character, and which you use to get the hex of the character and get it from CL. Int 21, let's remove the space. Int 20. Now this basic thing should work. Now if you, if you, if sometimes when your code's really long, um, when you use the debug command, see like debug test.asm, you see how the first line's A100? Sometimes if your line's too long, some of your code may go out the screen and you can't see it. So what you can do, you can store a log by typing in A less than test.asm greater than um, test.log and that will send everything to a log and won't show it on the console these aren't really read as less than and greater than symbols I'm just saying that because that's what the symbols are now see if you open test.log here it, it logs everything it did let's close this out now let's try test let me see I type in a 3 and let's say a 6 and it's going to give me a 9 it's not 369 just because it's displaying all the characters. See if I type in 2 and a 2, it's going to give me a 4. But what if I type in a 1 and a 9? Whoops. Test. 1 and a 9. It's going to give me a colon because what's right above 9 in this um, ASCII table, it's a colon. And what's right above that, it's a semicolon and then a less than symbol and an equal symbol so that means if I open here again and I said like 5 and 3 3 or 5 and 2, 7 whoops. let's say 5 and 8 5 and 8 is going to give me an equal sign because 5 and 8 is 13 and that would be 4 above 9 which is 1 two, three, four, or an equal sign. So now I'm going to use some jumps to make it check if it's greater than 39 right here. And if it is greater than 39, then it's going to say your value is too large. Um, and to do this, we're going to, first we're going to define some variables. Let's go to 300, define bytes. Um, they're not really variables, but they're kind. They're practically what you think of variables. Um, your value is too large. Let's go ahead and capitalize this. Put a new line right here, and a three fifty. Define bytes zero a zero d. Your value is too small. Now let's go all the way back up here. See here's where it displays your character. Remember that? So what we're going to do, we're going to compare CL which is the final character it's going to display, the final hex, with 39. 
And now, remember when I said compare sends it to a flag? Then I can use like J and E, and I could jump to somewhere if it's not equals, or J E and jump to somewhere if it's equals. Well, I can use J G to jump to somewhere if it's greater, or J G E to jump to somewhere if it's greater than or equal. Same with J L for less than, J L E for less than or equals. The only downside to these is they don't work as well as J E and J N E. They can't jump as far. It, I don't know why, I'm sure a more advanced assembly programmer would know, but if I try to jump from 100 to 350, it's going to give me an error. But if I just try to jump from 100 to 150, it's going to work just fine. So JG150, that's going to compare CL with 39 and send that to a flag and so basically it's going to say if 30 um 150 is or if CL is greater than 39 then go to 150 and then at A150 I'm going to say mob A09 mob DX300 mob um, int 21 int 20 so at 150, I'm going to say your value is too large. And now again, these can't jump too far. So I'm trying to limit how far it can jump. Let's say 75. This I don't even think it can jump to like 225 from here. I think it, I think it can jump all the way to 175. A 175. Let me just copy this. A175, um, except it's a 300 to 350. Let me make sure there's no errors. Check my log. This is going to take a little while. There we go. Let me see. There we go. None of my, or my jump didn't have an error. That's jump if graders, if it's greater. So if it's greater, we're going to jump to. 150 and say your value is too large. If it's less than, let's say jump to 175. Check our log. Yes, 175 wasn't too far. If, if you want to see what I'm talking about, let me change this to like 300. And look what it's going to do when I send it to a log. It's going to put a little error under 300 because it can't jump that far. And then it would fail to assemble my code. So we're going to leave that at 175 and assemble it. And now look, test. One, two. Your value is too small. The reason it said my value is too small because it's still comparing if it's less than 39. We want to compare again and check if it's less than 30. There we go. Whoops. I messed up again. I gotta go back and assemble it. There we go. Now, test. One, two. See, it gives me three. What if I try to add something weird like A and a set four? So, say your value is too large. So now it would only add if the result is equal to zero through nine. So, Five four, it's going to give me nine. Or three three, it will give me six. What if I try to add like five or six seven? Your value is too large. Or um, what's right before zero? Um, a hey, I'll just use a negative sign. If negative, if I try to add negative a negative sign on one your value is too small. So now it's actually checking to make sure it's in the range of 0 through 9. See value is too large. Now you can easily change this calculator to a subtraction by going in here where you where is it? Right here where I add CL and DL if I subtract them. And now, whoops, let me, I forgot to assemble it.
can be assemble it. There, test. Now look at subtraction. Three and two gives me one. Um, seven and four, five. It's going to give me two. But then this is an example of why having it say your value is too small is good. Because if I start to try to subtract nine from three or from two, or whoops. If I say, if I say two minus nine, so say your value is too small. So this that's how to make. Um, so this is more on jumps, more advanced jumps. Um, remember, you can add things above nine and below zero. The reason I don't allow you is this is how I explained it when it display it properly. Because you can add things just fine. The point is you just want to be able to display it. And the reason I'm I stuck with just showing you the ASCII is because I wanted to show you this when I figure out how to the figure out like how to display integers correctly I'll gladly make a tutorial on that I'm actually not 100% sure myself so since this code's kind of long and little messy and hard to follow along with I'm going to upload this um, and I'm going to Put the link. Or I'm going to actually put this in the description, and so you can try to assemble this yourself and see how it works. So yeah, that's it for this more complicated um, tutorial. And the next ones are. Um, I'm not. I don't know what I'm going to put my next tutorial on. I guess we'll figure out.